Hey everybody, it's Mr. Brad, and today I'm going to give you my top five tips for working on guided reading at home with your child. Let's get started. My first tip is to keep an eye on the length of your guided reading sessions. When I work one-on-one -on -one with a student on their guided reading book, I usually keep my guided reading sessions to 10 minutes maximum. When you start teetering towards 15 and 20 minutes, they get really, really antsy and they start to lose focus. So I definitely try to keep my guided reading sessions to about 10 minutes maximum. My second tip is to utilize a quiet area in the house, whether it's at the dining room table or at the kitchen table. Um, the best place to work in guided reading is a quiet area away from distractions, such as maybe a younger sibling, um, toys, screens, tablets, TVs. Um, a quiet area with any sort of distraction is the best area to work on guided reading with your child. My third tip is if your child's giving a little bit of a pushback saying, oh, I don't want to read, I don't want to do this, I just want to play with my toys, a great way to get them into reading and doing schoolwork in, in general is giving them choices. Um, for example, uh, maybe you could pick out maybe a couple books from your library at home or your collection of books at home um, and you could say, hey, so-and-so, would you like to read a dinosaur book? Do you want to read a dragon book or do you want to read um, a roller coaster book? A great way to get them into reading and doing schoolwork in general is giving them choices. And that's what I do um, with guided reading books and also centers here at school. I'll give them um, choices as to what they would like to work on, what center they'd like to go to, and also I like to give them options about what book they'd like to work on. My fourth tip is to try to work on the book with your child daily. Whenever I do guided reading in class, I always try to work with that student every day and usually around the same time of day. Um, whether that be before lunchtime or after lunchtime, I try to keep it around that same time and I try to do it daily. If it's a more challenging book that's longer in length, maybe has some new words in it that your child is not familiar with, um, you may want to work on that book daily for um, about a span of two weeks. But if it's an easy book, like the guided reading books we sent home through our Goddard at Home Learning Packets, um, that is a book that can be worked on over the span of a week. My next tip is to have your child use their magic reading finger when they're reading their book. I call, in class, I call our pointer finger our magic finger, and when we're reading a book, I call it our magic reading finger. And what I had the student do is I had them tap on each word as they read the book. And I do this to ensure that they're not just going off of memory and they're actually sitting there and um, learning the words. They're not just going off of what they remember in memory. If your child does not want to use their magic reading finger, what you could do is you can look at their eyes as they're reading the page and make sure their eyes are on the words. Um, and that's a great way to ensure that they're learning and not just going off of memory. And I have a bonus tip. My bonus tip is positive praise, positive praise, positive praise. Whether it's a high five, a hug, a fist bump, or a sticker, or a star, I always give my students positive praise every time um, we either finish working on a book or by the time he, uh, he or she finished working on the book completely. So at the end of the day, we're done with our guided reading session for the day. I'd go, great job, so-and-so, give me a high five. I'm so proud of you. And at the end of the week, I would put a sticker or a star on their guided reading book. Um, but I only did that on um, the paper books that I printed out. I can't put them, um, but I did not put them on the like regular books like this book right here. And another bonus tip, a great, great tool online is called Epic. It's a great reading app. You could log on, get a free account. We have our class code that has been sent out over email previously. Um, you could type in that code and you can find age appropriate and developmentally appropriate books for your child. Um, and your child can actually go on there and pick topics that interest them and you could filter out the results to only show books that are appropriate for pre-K and kindergarten. So. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to make more very soon. Thank you so much for all of your support. I have been so overwhelmed and so touched by all the love and support I've received over the past couple weeks. I miss the kids so, so much and I can't wait until we're all together soon, but I promise that we will get your child ready and well prepared for kindergarten. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you soon.